Good afternoon, dear brethren, sisters, Church of God, which is the Church and Living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. An unexpected but interesting video, I believe, that we got today. This, uh, please get your authorized version of the scriptures and please read along with me in the scriptures. Read along with me because guess what? I make mistakes. I'm not perfect. You need to see what we're looking at and also be a Berean, search the scriptures daily, but it is be so. Read along with me, okay? Get your authorized version, King James Version, okay? Yesterday, I was asked a question on an older video about the shape of the earth, okay? Uh, incidentally, not even a minute in, I don't care what you think the shape of the earth is. Okay, it's a diversionary issue. Okay, it is not a salvific issue whatsoever. Okay, I don't care. Okay, I personally think the earth is round. There was a time where I kind of was teeter tottering a bit. It's like, well, maybe the earth could be flat. But, uh, you know, after scriptural um, evidence and also considering where the ultimate flat earth thing came from Catholic uh, now listen not even a minute in leave it alone that's not the issue here I don't care if you think the earth is flat pie shaped or shaped like a top hat or a Pringles chip I don't care who is Jesus Christ are you gonna go to heaven or are you gonna go to hell are you sure okay that is what, that is, you know, what this is about. This is about our Lord Jesus Christ, God, who is our Father, and His Word, the authorized version. Okay? So, please, if you're inclined to comment about the thing of the shape of the earth, please don't. Please don't. Please don't make, please don't. I don't want to have to be deleting comments about this kind of thing. It's a not an issue whatsoever. I don't care. Okay? You're not going to get before the judgment seat of Christ or for some the great white throne. It's like, did you believe the earth was a flat or round? However you answer according to what you think. It's not like that. Okay? So, all right? Anyway, I was asked two questions. The first question was uh, by somebody who was at least in title was feminine don't know if you were uh, but this is okay yes uh, do I believe that men were on the moon no no I don't I do not believe man made it to the moon I, I, again if you wanna all right I don't care okay I don't care it's not a thing with me okay it's not all right? It's not a thing with me. Okay? I don't believe it. Uh, you want That's fine if you want to believe that. That's go right ahead. I don't care. Okay? I really don't. Uh, the redemption of the purchase possession could happen at any moment. We got bigger fish to fry. Okay? But no, I personally do not believe man made it to the moon. Done. Second question. Um, I don't have it keyed up or else I would read it verbatim, but I, I don't need to. The question was, and what I do remember was, whoever, if you see this, uh, watch this, you asked, do I believe the narrative? That was a key phrase that you put there. That tells me that you were not believing the very question that you were asking me. That's very, very telling. You mentioned something about the, do you believe the narrative that the earth is on this axis or whatever, or whatever, that it's spinning, whatever. But the ultimate end of the question was, do you believe that the earth orbits around the sun? That was the gist of the question. And like I said, the individual, if you see this, I, I just, I'm not, I've got a video for it, okay? Um, 
the fact that this individual said, do you believe the narrative? That's very telling language, okay? I, when I see comments, I pay close attention to phraseology, wording, and repetitious ways in uh, writing, okay? That, that's why sometimes it's quite easy to pick out when someone's trying to pretend to be someone else under, they call them sock accounts now, okay? Uh, I, I pay attention to that kind of thing. But this individual said the narrative thereof. Now, the question whether or not the Earth is on like an axis or I do believe the Earth is a ball, okay? Drop it, okay? Okay, brethren aside, brethren aside, I, I ain't nobody got time for that kind of stuff, okay? But whether or not it's on the a this axis or excess, whatever, and then it's blue, it's spinning around all crazy, I, that, I don't care, okay? But... The question about does the earth orbit the sun or the sun orbit the earth? And in the response to this individual, I, I plainly said, I don't really care about that. <laughs> okay, that, that's, you know, I mean, you look at the videos that the Lord has given me to do, that's rarely the direction that the Lord takes me in. Um, there are videos where we talk about evolution, that's stupid. Okay, but these kinds of questions like this, I, I don't usually get too many of these. And um, also, like I said, I, I, I don't, you know, that's not the direction the Lord leads me into. But uh, when you ask me these things, see, this is my standard. And as I responded to you, dear friend, I call you that, I don't know if, if you is and if you ain't, but you came peaceably and... What not, so all's well. Um, this is my standard. This is where I go to. I don't think you were expecting me to respond to you the way I did. Where are you? Where are you? But hey, that's okay. Let's tackle this question. Now, as I remember, Jesuit Kent Helvin is one that believes that the sun is the center and that the earth goes around the sun. That makes perfect sense to me for Kent Helvin. Okay, that guy's a lost devil. That Kent Helvin is a Jesuit, okay? And for the earth to be revolving around the sun, you know, Jesuit, Catholic, Catholicos, Baalite, Baalite, Ra, sun worshipers, you know, the little sun-shaped cookie. So it makes sense that Jesuit Kent Helvin would believe that the earth orbits the sun. Okay? That, uh, for, for those reasons that I just mentioned. He's a Jesuit. Jesuitism. Baalite. Baal worshiper. The, the perfectly round sun-shaped cookie. The rising of the sun and the Catholic mass. Okay? That, that makes total sense. What say it to Scripture? What say it to Scripture? Uh, for those of you brethren, this is like, wow, Brad, this is a different type of video for you. It is. It is, okay? Um, you ask me a question, and it's like, like I told the individual, I don't, I don't care about that. I really don't. I, 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 that, uh, the Lord uh, doesn't lead me in that direction for videos. I, I don't, I mean, because I, I, I have a perfect standard. This is my standard, the authorized version, okay? I judge myself. First, through the scripture, and this is what, this is my standard. The authorized version, the King James Version. The perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration word of God. This is my standard. This is where I go to answer questions. Here. Okay, always here first. What say the scripture about this? What say the scripture about this? Beg your pardon. Beg your pardon. Genesis chapter 1. Verses 1 on to verse 3. In the beginning. Beginning. Genesis. That's what that means. In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. In the beginning God. Father. Heaven and earth. Verse 2. And the earth was without Form and void. You nut job, uh, what is that? Gap 
theory people are on drugs. Uh, the Lord rebuke you. That in verse 2, that there's the there's this gap of millions of bit. You're you're crazy. Okay, that this we are on the first earth. Okay, you can verify that in the book of Revelation. All right, so there will be a link on the in the description box about that. Of course, Shepherd's Chapel, those devils are big proponents of the gap theory that the earth is million. It's not. Okay, but let's continue. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the capital S Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Very first appearance of any form of the word Spirit, and it's a capital S of God, showing us God Himself. So in verse 1 we see God, in verse 2 we see Spirit of God, Verse 3, and God said, the Word, capital W, made flesh. The Lord Jesus Christ, God said, let there be light, and there was light. Hmm. That's the Godhead, by the way. It's not the Trinity. The Trinity is a satanic creation. It is not truth. It is evil. It is vile. It is vomitous. It is made of dung. Okay? Your Trinity, as it were, and the word Trinity does not appear in Scripture, and do not and watch out for these guys who try to link Godhead with Trinity. That that's that's dangerous. Okay? It's Godhead. This is the Godhead. It's not talking about a person. Or I should say persons, is it? Where does it say mention of persons? It doesn't. Okay? Three persons. Okay, we are made in the image of God. We have a spirit, we have a soul, we have a body. But as we see here, the Godhead, which is comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Jesus is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. In the beginning, God, the Father. The Spirit of God, self-explanatory, verse four, the first three, and God said, spake the capital W word of God, made flesh, okay, right there, that's Lord Jesus, okay, let there be light, and there was light. Let's read on to verse five. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. Very key to that. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. So we see a 24-hour period established in the first day of creation. Okay? Uh, the earth is, I believe now, what, 7,000 years old? Not millions and billions of years old? You evolutionists think that man evolved over millions and billions and trillions of years. Uh, you're crazy. Okay? You are. You call me crazy. You're Looney Tunes. You're, you're schizophrenic. Okay? You're, okay? <laughs> you, you and the talk show host ought to have uh, some good conversation. Okay? You guys are crazy. All right? But look at this here. Now, it can be assumed. Assumed. Yes, you heard me right. It can be assumed, perhaps, that the S U N was there. Okay, go with me here. Okay, but rather, look at what this look at what this is talking about in verse three. And God said, "Let there be light," and there was light. And God saw the light that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. So we know that God, uh, light is good. And it's divided from darkness. Okay? And God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. A day and a night. 24 hour period. 12 and 12. Okay? Are we not children of the day? And versus children of the night? And that's not vampires. Those are, you know, the reference is saved and lost. 
one could, and now I'm not being dogmatic, okay? I'm sharing with you, okay? This is not, I'm not being dogmatic, okay? So you know, 15 minutes in, okay? Most people will click away before this and make it blah, 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 okay? But I'm not being dogmatic on this. I'm sharing with you, okay? So like I said, th this is not the area that the Lord leads me into usually, okay? But what do we see here? Light and darkness, like we just said. John 1. John 1. John 1. Verses 1 on to verse 5. John 1. Verses 1 on to verse 5. In the beginning was the capital W word. Verse 3 in Genesis chapter 1. God said, right there. Okay? Right there. The Godhead being separate from one another, but not in form of persons. Find it! It's not there. Trinitarian. On your Roman Catholic, uh, Babylonian, Egyptian, Roman Catholic, Satanic Trinity. Okay? Yeah, get a fire going under you there, I hope. Anyway, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word, capital W, was with God. And the Word was God. That was is not a past tense. It's like that, it's just affirming that the Word, our Lord Jesus Christ, is God. Okay? One God comprised the spirit, soul, and body. But as we see in Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 and verse 3, by no coincidence, the Godhead can separate. You and I can't do that like God can, because we're not God. Okay? And capital W Word appears seven times in the scripture. Six times in a Bible, because they take out the... Johannian comma, which is talking about the Godhead, that God is one God comprised of spirit, soul, and body, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, uh, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one, one God, spirit, soul, and body, Jesus is the fullness of the Godhead bodily, that kind of stuff, okay? And in the NIV, ESV, the New American Standard, or the LSD version as it is, uh, they take out 1 John 5, 7 which is about the Godhead. So, capital W word in the Bible appears six times, seven times in the scripture. Just like in the Bible, Savior takes out the I, I believe it is, or it takes out a letter out of Savior to make Savior in the modern Bible, in the Bibles, excuse me, uh, six, a Savior of six letters, where scripture, Savior is with seven letters, don't, and Brother Alexander's the one who brought that up. To me, at least, it's like, don't, don't miss that. Don't miss that. Oh, that, hey. Is God a spirit or is God spirit? It's not the same thing. It's not the same thing. God is a spirit. Take out that A. God is spirit. Then how are you supposed to know which is which? Well, that's when you go to your Jesuit trained cemetery and pastor with textual criticism, and the Greek says this, and the Hebrew says that, and then there you go. Now watch this stuff. Words are important. Words have meaning. Absolutely. Amen. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Okay? In him was life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. We've talked about this before. You're alive. You have light in your eyes. Take a Polaroid picture, and you see that your eyes are, you know, that little red thing? Especially with like, uh, you know, you know, like Polaroid cameras. And sometimes you'll see that the eyes are reflective, right? That's the light of the eyes. Look at a dead person through a Polaroid like that. You don't get that. Why? Because there's no light in the eye. That means he was, okay, in him was life and the life was the light of men. 
Jesus Christ has given you life. Check your pictures, your home uh, pictures in your photo album or something. Okay, not on your health phone or your tablet. Okay, uh, but check them. You'll see a photograph somewhere where the eye is really bright because of the light in the eye. A dead body doesn't have that. Okay, that's what that means. It doesn't mean that every single person is saved. No, it means that God has given everyone, including you who deny him, life. Okay, that's what that means. All right, John 3, John 3, 18 under 21. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Hey, sweetheart. <laughs> I know what your answer is, but... Uh, were they looking forward to the cross before the death, burial, and resurrection? No, they weren't, you lying, pond scum dog. No, they weren't. No, they weren't. The faith was in what? He was offering them the kingdom of heaven. Their faith was in that he was king. They didn't know about the death, burial, and resurrection until it happened. Or else you have a big problem with the Ephesians. Did the Lord rebuke you, dude? Okay? I don't know why I respect you. I really don't sometimes. Anyway. Anyway. And this is the common condemnation. The light is coming to the world. And men love darkness rather than light. Because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Verse 4 in Genesis 1. And God saw the light that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. Hmm. For everyone, uh, back in uh, John 3. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Neither cometh to the light lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. Verse 4 again, And God saw the light, that it was good. Hmm. 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 John 11, verses 9 and 10. John 11, verses 9 and 10. Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in a day? Question! If there's twelve hours in a day, how many hours are there in a night? It is, even atheists and evolutionists uh, don't know about some Christians. You never know with them guys. Okay, but uh, it is generally accepted. Come on. A 24-hour period. So... <laughs> Are there not 12 hours in the day? Okay. Are there not 12 hours in the day? All right. Genesis 5, uh, 1 verse 5. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Okay. All right. You with me? So, uh, John 11 verse 9. Are there not 12 hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. And who is that light? It's the Lord Jesus Christ. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. Hmm. But yet, every one of us who is alive, we have light in the eyes. All that means is that the Lord Jesus Christ gave you life. No matter what you think about that, it's irrelevant. Contrast now. Contrast. Okay? God separated the light from darkness, did he not? We just read it, didn't we? What's the contrast to this? Darkness. Isaiah 14, just one verse. Read the verse 15, pause the video in Isaiah 14. Read uh, yourself, pause the video, read verses 12 on to verse 15. We're only going to read verse 12. Verse 12 in Isaiah 14. 
Are up, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? What does that mean? Son of the morning. How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? Son of the morning, huh? Ezekiel 28. Of course we had to go here. Verse 17. Just one verse. Just one verse. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. Son of the morning. Brightness. Ah. But thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy reason by wisdom. Thy corru thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Hmm. Hmm. And if the light that is in thee is darkness, how great is that darkness? Okay, there are a lot of places we could have gone to, but keeping this pretty simple because this is kind of on the whim thing, okay? 2 Corinthians 11, verse 14. 2 Corinthians 11, just one verse. Verse 14. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Mm. Hmm. Hmm. Genesis chapter 1 again, verses 4 and 5. And God saw the light that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. The evening and the morning were the first day. Now, you may assume that the sun was there in the, that account. Okay? Could it have been? Textually, we really don't have any evidence to support it. And from verse 1 to 5, okay, okay, we can assume that the sun was there, the S-U-N. Okay, we can assume that. We can. But scripturally, it's not there, is it? And you might be thinking, well, how, how could there be light without sun? Book of Revelation. Just an example. Just an example, like I said, I'm not, uh, I am not, um, I'm not being dogmatic about this, okay? Uh, uh, let me see. Ah, Revelation 22, verse uh, 3 and verse 5, okay? And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it. It's one throne because it's one God. Okay, all right, the throne of God and of the Lamb. The Lamb is God, the Father. One God comprises the spirit, soul, and body. Okay, the Trinity, your little satanic stupid Trinity, is cast into the lake of fire. Okay, we've done many videos on that. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. And they shall see his face, amen, and his name shall be in their foreheads. And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. We looked at that purely for the fact, well, how can there be day night light without sunshine well there's an example right there okay all right and you gotta remember that false light no marvel satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light or it, or himself is transformed into an angel of light excuse me okay all right so this idea of there being light without sun suddenly starts to be plausible, doesn't it? Especially from verses 1 on to verse 5, 
we're working purely off of an assumption that the sun is there. Is that good or bad? Whatever. But textually, from verses 1 on to verse 5, it's only an assumption. Okay? And you got to remember, too, in Genesis 1, verse 31, And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Okay? And see, in Genesis 1, verses 4 and 5, we see this light and darkness and the dividing of light and darkness. A distinction between the two. Okay? Everything God made, we just saw in verse 31. And God saw everything that he made. And behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Creation was pristine, perfect, without error, without sin. Absolutely, amen, amen, amen. Okay, man was created immortal, sinless, and you can make a very good, valid argument, and I'm actually with you on this one, that man at creation was created vegan. Now, you're going to get involved with, well, what about honey and butter? Whatever. Okay, at the least, let's go this way. At the least, man was created a vegetarian. How's that? Okay, does that make you feel better? Okay, all right, because it wasn't until afterwards, after the Garden of Eden, where man was allowed to, you know, start eating meat. Otherwise, it was the uh, green herbs of the trees and whatnot. Okay, so you can make a very valid argument for that. Okay, but what happened? See, God gives man free will. Yes, he does. Yes, he does, Calvinist. Yes, he does. Okay? Yes, he does, Catholic. What happened? 1 Corinthians 15, verses 21 and 22. 1 Corinthians 15, 21 and 22. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God manifest in the flesh. Okay? God became flesh, a devil. Flesh did not become God. The Lord rebuke you. That has been scripturally debunked and proved. That you guys worship the sin suit, okay? Uh, you want to still bring that up, okay? Just simply put the uh, Judge Not video where we simply debunk your stupidity of wanting to justify flesh, okay? All right? All right? Verse 22. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. What happened? Yea, hath God said. See, Satan tempted Eve. But see, you, you got to remember, Satan didn't hold a gun to Eve or Adam's head. He made the suggestion, but Adam, Eve made the decision to eat of the tree that God told them not to eat of. Oh, and by the way, genius, that's a work. It was not by grace through faith in the Garden of Eden. Don't believe you, you, sweetheart, by grace through faith in the Garden of Eden. You, you are stupid. Okay, if that, if you, I, I haven't listened to you in a long time, but if you're, if you're like, your little brother Jack Smack who believes that. If you, you know, you, come on. Come on, you're a little bit better than that, ain't you, sweetheart? To not, you know, it's like, okay, it wasn't by grace through faith in the Garden of Eden. Okay? Even one of your, your disciples uh, in one of the comment sections had to agree. It's like, okay, yeah, it wasn't by grace through faith in the Garden of Eden. You're right, it wasn't. It was all works. Just like it will be in the kingdom of heaven, which you guys like to say it's by grace through faith in the kingdom of heaven. Anyway, 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 we're, we're not going to get off on that. Okay? What happened? God gave them a work to do. Don't do that. They did. 
Satan tempted. But Satan didn't force at gunpoint them to make that decision. They had free will to do it. They made the decision. Okay? They made the decision. Free will. Okay? But also, too, you also have to remember, man didn't know what sin was. Absolutely. But God, on the other hand, in Genesis chapter 2, verses 16 on to verse 17, who was the first? Because man was created immortal, and at the least, vegetarian, sinless, ignorant of sin. God said, don't eat that. They ate it. That's a work. Dude, that's work. Okay? Get your head up from but <laughs> Okay. Alright, that's a work. It was by works in the Garden of Eden. Anyway, anyway. Okay? Satan planted the seed. Adam and Eve. Eve, then to Adam. Okay? Uh, they were the ones who pulled the proverbial trigger. Satan didn't make anyone do anything. God doesn't make anyone do anything. We have free will. Never forget that. Especially when you're encountering a Calvinist. Never forget that. Genesis 2, verses 16 and 17. The Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. That's a work, genius, sweetheart. Okay. All right. Anyway, who is the first one to mention death, dying? Check. Check the scriptures yourself. That's the first variation of any type of form. Of death, dying, dead, or whatever. We've also done a video on that somewhere. If I can remember, I'll try to find it. Okay? Yeah, I'll write it down. Okay. Anyway. God was the one who first brought up the word die. Okay? Alright? Just so you know. God gives man free will. Or else you're a robot, Scotty. Okay, <laughs> give me a break. Anyway, anyway, Garden of Eden happened and blah, blah, blah. And here we are today, you know, born sinners. All right. Now let's go to Genesis chapter 1, verses 14 on to verse 18. Okay. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the, di the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and it was so and God made two great lights the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night, he made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide, there's that divide again, the light from the darkness and God saw that it was so. Question. Is verses 14 and 18 describing the same thing in Genesis 1 through 5? I don't believe so. I'm not being doc I'm not being dogmatic on this at all. I'm just saying. Okay? Because look at what we just read. Alright? Lights in the firmament. Okay, in the video, in the description box, there will be the video of the third heaven where we discuss this. Heaven, heaven, what we see above us right here, the sky, the firmament, space, the third heaven, where God is, okay? About that, about the third heaven thing, uh, uh, I think I, I wrote that down, uh, getting a little ahead of ourselves, 
But uh, 2 Corinthians 12, just one verse. 2 Corinthians 12, just one verse. All right. Verse, I will read verses 1 on to verse 2. <laughs> Uh, actually, uh, let's read on to verse 4 in 2 Corinthians 12, verses 1 on to verse 4. It is not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago. Whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell. God knoweth. Such an one caught up to the third heaven. Heaven, the sky. That you and I are looking at. Well, that I'm looking at now. The sky with the clouds, the atmosphere, the firmament. Okay? Some refer to this as the dome or whatever. Um, the, uh, the atmosphere, the hole in the atmosphere thing from a decade or so ago. Remember that? But you got the sky that you and I are looking at. That's the heaven. The firmament, space, the third heaven. That's where God is. Obviously. Okay? The third heaven. All right? So, we'll go on that. All right? I knew a man... Okay, we already read verse 2. And I knew such a... And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell, God knoweth, how he was caught up into paradise. And when you do the... I, I, there's a video on this somewhere. I don't know. That video was done before I was doing tags in them, unfortunately. When you do the word search on paradise, the link is with the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Jesus is in paradise. Paradise is being with Jesus. Okay? That's where God is. Paradise with God. Jesus. Get it? Okay? How that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words which is it is not lawful for a man to utter. But yet you got these Pentecostal twits who go to heaven, uh, go to heaven, come down and write a book about it. And then you got these guys who go to heaven and come back and write a book about it and make a movie about it. But yet Paul, who went up to the third heaven, said what? How that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. And he doesn't describe, Paul doesn't describe what he saw, does he? No. No, that's why when you get these, these guys are liars, they are devils. These guys who say, well, I've been to heaven and I'm telling you what it's like. No, you haven't. You've seen something, sure you have. Sure you have. These are the same guys who also say, well, I've seen the Lord. No, you haven't. You've seen an angel of light. Yeah, but you haven't seen the Lord. Okay? Anytime you encounter a Pentecostal on that, you call them on that. You call them a liar to their face. You're a liar. You have not been to heaven. You have not been to hell and come back to tell the story about it. Paul was not uh, given to do so. Oh, I guess you're, I guess you're pretty important, huh? Uh, I guess you're a little Christ, huh? To come to go to heaven or to hell and come back and write a book about it, huh? You, you, you. Ugh. Or, I've seen it. I, I've seen the Lord. No, you haven't. You wicked devil. No, you haven't. Get you. Okay? Alright? But, back to Genesis chapter 1, verses 14 on verse 18. I believe that from verse 14 on to verse 18 is clearly different from verses 4 and 5. Okay, like I said, I'm not being dogmatic on this, okay? This is not, you know, this is not usually what the Lord gives me to talk about. But it is in this context, especially in verse 16, God made two great lights. The sun and the moon? Hmm? The sun and the moon. It does not say that in the text, does it? No, it doesn't. No, it certainly does not, does it? Again, it is given to assumption, isn't it? But see, we have from verse 14 on to verse 18 a little bit more evidence, substance to go off of 
rather than just in verse 4 and 5. Okay? And I believe 4 and 5 is making that distinction between what is good and what is not. Okay? All right? All right? That's what I believe. All right? Obviously, the sun was there. Obviously. But when... Uh, okay? But what in Genesis chapter 1 verse 1... What came first? In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. You'll say, well, heaven came first. Okay? What came after that? Earth. So, earth came first. I, I know it's, I'm looking at it right there, and so are you, hopefully, heaven and earth. Okay? We know about the heaven thing. That's not what we're talking about. Earth. Earth. Verse 14, And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. Let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and it was so. There is a light of the moon and a light of the sun. Okay? And God made two great lights right there. Verse 16, I believe, is your strongest evidence to say, okay, this could be talking about the sun and the moon. Sun and moon is not mentioned there. You are right. You are right. But does that mean that the sun and moon wasn't there? We know by at least the sixth day of creation that the sun, the moon, the stars were there. We know that. Planets somewhere in there too now within this we don't have that account but the word planets which we're going to look at okay there are planets out there brother sister okay there are okay there are all right but i believe verse 16 shows you the made two great lights i personally believe that is a referencing that that's referencing the two great lights the sun and the moon okay i'm not being dogmatic on that but I believe, like I told this individual in the comment section, that, okay, you can make an assumption that the sun and moon may have been there in verses 4 and 5. Uh -huh. Your stronger evidence is in verses 14 and 18. Specifically, verse 16. Specifically, verse 16. But now, the word sun, S-U-N, okay? The very first, and brother, uh, like I told you over the phone, uh, it was verse 12. Okay, it was verse 12. <laughs> it was verse 12. Okay, uh, Genesis chapter 15, verse 12, and we will read on to verse 17, Okay? Very first appearance of the word S U N. Question Does that mean the sun wasn't there until Genesis 15? Now, no, no, come on. <laughs> come on. Obviously, obviously, the sun, the moon had to have been there before this. It had to have been. Okay, and we're not going to get into this big debate of when it actually got, you know, when it actually became or whatever. I believe it's Genesis 14 on to verse 18, okay? And, and the uh, six days of creation. Remember, the, it was six days, the seventh day God rested. And we're going to touch on that because today is the Shabbat, the Sabbath, right? Anyway, and when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram. Lo, and horror of great darkness fell upon him. Don't, sun, darkness, Okay, don't, don't miss that one. And he said unto Abram, who's the he? God. Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in the land that is not theirs, Egypt, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge. And afterward they shall come out with great substance. And thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace. Thou shalt be buried in a good old age. But in the fourth generation, 
They shall come hither again, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. And it came to pass that when the sun went down, that's the second mention, the, and it was dark, behold, a smoking furnace and a burning lamp that passed between those pieces. Okay? Verse 12 it was, brother. Okay? Genesis 15, verse 12. That's the first reference of sun, of the word sun. Check it out for yourself. Okay? Are we to believe that the sun wasn't there until that reference? Of course not. Like I said, I personally believe that the sun was there in verses 14 uh, on to 18 in Genesis chapter 1, specifically verse 16. What about moon? Hmm? What about moon? Singular. You know the word moons that appears in Scripture? Do the work yourself. I did. Every occurrence of the plural moons has new affixed to it. Check it out. Check it out for yourself. Do it. New moons. New moons associated with Sabbaths. Things equated onto the Jews. Or other words, holy days. Oh, oh yeah, we, we're going to hit that hard. Yes, we are. We have to. We have to. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. What about moons? So moons we're not looking at. Okay? Look, your, look for yourself. Go ahead, brother. I know you will, my dear sweet brother. I know you will. Praise the Lord for you. It's like, okay, moons, check. Everyone, and if I'm wrong, put the one in there that I missed, okay? If I miss one, I, hey, I made a mistake. I made mistakes. But, moon. What's the first appearance of moon? Genesis 37. Check this out. Verses 9 on to verse 11. And he dreamed yet another dream, and told it to his brethren, and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun, the greater light, and the moon, the lesser light, and the eleven stars made obeisance to me. Hmm. Hmm. Sun, moon, and the stars. That's referring on to his brethren and stuff like that. Okay. And, you know, in Revelation, the woman with the sun and the moon, and the, uh, that's not the Roman Catholic Mary. That's a picture of Israel. Okay? Watch out for these wicked Catholics. Okay? And he told it to his father and to his brethren. And his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren, the uh, sun and the moon and the eleven stars, shall I and thy mother, you, 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 you see that, right? Good. I hope you do. I'm, ass I'm assuming you do, okay? I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee, to the earth. And his brethren envied him, but his father observed the same. His first appearance of moon. Now, the first variation of anything of star, stars, stargazer, okay, we, we already looked at in Genesis chapter 1. Verse 16, okay? That's right there, Genesis 1, 16. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, the sun, and the lesser light to rule the night, the moon. He made the stars also. That's the first appearance of any variation of the word star. Okay, you can check that. Come on! Come on! That That's obvious! Okay? All right? Now, about verse 16, you are right. It does not say sun or moon. You were right. You're right. You're right. You're right. I'll give you that. It doesn't. But I think I, it's safe to say that that's a reference on to such. It's a lot safer, stronger evidence than just going off of verses 4 and 5. Because we already looked at God is <laughs> light. Okay? We saw that already. All right? All right? Okay? But the first appearance of the singular star. Okay, that's the first appearance of any kind of variation of the word star. I believe it's stars, star, and stargazers. 
I believe. Okay, you can do that yourself. But that's the first appearance. Okay? In context what? Greater and lesser lights. Okay? Numbers 24. Numbers 24. All right? Verses 15 on to verse 19. And this is Balaam. 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 Because it's got the two lines above it. Okay. And this is Balaam giving his prophecy unto, uh, uh, what is it, uh, Balak. Okay, Balak. No, Balak. Uh, Balak was the prophet. The, the, yeah, Balak. No, Balak's anger was kindled against Balaam. Excuse me, getting that messed up. Okay? And smote his hands together, and Balak said unto Balaam, okay, or Balaam, okay? Anyway, verse 15 and verse 19, okay? That's why you need to read along. And he took up his parable and said, Balaam, Balaam, the, and said, Balaam, or Balaam, the son of Beor has said, and the man whose eyes are open has said, he has said, which heard the words of God and knew the knowledge of the Most High, which saw the vision of the Almighty falling into a trance, but having his eyes open. I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. Pay attention. There shall come a capital S star. First appearance of the singular star, and it's with a capital S. A star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel, and shall smite the corners of Moab, and this uh, Moab, excuse me, and destroy all the children of Seth, Sheth, and Edom shall be a possession. Seir also shall be a possession for his enemies. And Israel shall do valiantly. Out of Jacob shall come he. Jacob. Israel! Out of Jacob shall come he that shall have dominion. And shall destroy him that remaineth of the city. Capital S star. Revelation 22. I didn't even write this one down. but um, Where is that? Oh, verse 16 in Revelation chapter 22. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. Or case S, of course, but that's the tie-in. Okay? So that capital S star out of Jacob. Okay? Here, here's a little one for you, too. I'll just throw in here. Um, 2 Kings 23. Planets. Planets. If I'm not mistaken, if I'm wrong, someone, if singular planet is in the authorized version, put it in the description, uh, in the comment section for me. I didn't look. I don't think, I, and I think that's one of the things that the flat earthers like to work off of that uh, scriptures doesn't say planet. But it says planets. Second, hey, 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 don't, we're not going to talk, we're not, I'm not playing that. You want to believe what you want to believe, you can believe what you want to believe. I'm just showing you, okay, so don't, don't. Action will be taken if you get too crazy about it, you understand? Okay, um, Second Kings 23, verse 5. And he put down the idolatrous priests whom the kings of Judah had ordained to burn incense in the high places in the cities of Judah and in the places round about Jerusalem. They also that burned incense unto Baal to the sun and to the moon and to the planets right there and to all the host of heaven. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Now, while we're here, today is the Shabbat, the Sabbath. 
we're gonna try we're gonna address this okay Genesis chapter 2 we see in Genesis chapter 1 verse 31 God saw everything that he had made and behold it was very good the evening and the morning were the sixth day Genesis chapter 2 verses 1 on to verse 3 now Genesis chapter 2 is not a contradiction with Genesis chapter 1 it's a retelling especially from the perspective of the Garden of Eden okay and this is talking about verse 8 and the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden the what was happening in the Garden of Eden was happening in the Garden of Eden okay it's not that's the actual creation within the Garden of Eden not a contradiction with what anything was said in Genesis chapter 1 okay that's it's verse 8 ties it in that shows you okay that it's about the Garden of Eden all right but thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them and on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made and God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made there's there's a sweetheart couple down here at the one store that um, and they are um, they are Hindus I believe they have the the red dot or uh, whatnot nice people uh, very nice very kind um, uh, very polite forthright people They're very nice I like them they're nice guy uh, nice people a husband and wife um, I bring that up because th those guys work seven days a week they're, they're always there seven days a week with the rare exception that one of their family uh, members you know uh, the Patel family huge in Woodstock and in America actually but uh, you know with rare exceptions someone comes in so they gets this it's this uh, beautiful couple sweet young couple but I mean they're working seven days a week okay God the father took a day off okay. you workaholics out there you did Godfather took a day off okay but rested the seventh day the Sabbath Exodus 31 Exodus 31 there are those out there today who say that you have to keep the Sabbath today in order to be saved to be right with God um, uh, mark the messenger is a proponent because you gotta keep the commandments. He would, you know, you know uh, God's a respecter of persons. No, he isn't. Okay, that will be in the description box for you. Mark the mess. Okay, <laughs> all right. He's a guy who who's trying to bring you back on the law that you're, you know, gotta keep the law. You know, which was debunked in Acts chapter 15. Okay, but you have the Seventh Day Adventists who say that you gotta keep the Sabbath, and they say that it's a salvific issue. Again, not rightly dividing the word of truth. But, okay, Exodus 31, 16 and 17. Wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath. Did you see that? Don't look at me. Look at the verse. Wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath. You see that? To observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. It is a... Are you seeing that? Sign betwixt me and the children of Israel. Forever. A sign. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth. And on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. Okay. Now, today in this dispensation... As shown in Acts 15, okay, and also in the Pauline epistles, which we will be addressing, we're not going to Acts 15, okay? But um, keeping the Sabbath today to the Jew first and also to the Greek, a Greek is a Gentile, is not a salvific requirement. 
It is not a requirement for your salvation today to the Jew first, but also to the Gentile. Okay? Just like it is not required for you to keep the dietary laws because that was undone in 1 Timothy chapter 4. Okay? It is not a, it is not a salvific requirement to be right with God, to stay saved, be saved, whatever. No, it is not. The children of Israel. Okay, oh, wait, wait, wait. Ezekiel 20. Ezekiel 20. Okay, Ezekiel 20. Verses 16 on to 21. Because they despised my judgments and walked not in my statutes, but polluted my Sabbaths, for their heart went after their idols. And you know, when you got someone trying to say, oh, why aren't you keeping the Sabbath? Why are you doing your own will on the Sabbath? which the Lord kind of rebuked the children of Israel about you're doing your own will on the Sabbath? Yeah. Okay. Because they despised my judgments and walked not in my statutes, but polluted my Sabbaths, for their heart went after their idols. And remember, the idol is always the extension of the true idol yourself. Jingle all the way, buddy. Okay. Nevertheless, mine eyes spared them from destroying them. Neither did I make an end of them in the wilderness. But I said unto their children in the wilderness, Walk ye not in the statutes of your fathers. Neither observe their judgments, nor defile yourselves with their idols. I am the Lord your God. Walk in my statutes, and keep my judgments, and do them. And hallow my Sabbaths. And they shall be a sign between me and you, that ye may know that I am the Lord your God. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Mark, and Mark 2. Mark 2. 27 and 28. Okay? Yeah, and, and see this. And this. This is what. Yeah, I mean, Mark 2. 27 and 28. And he said unto them, The Sabbath was made for man, and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. Sabbath was made for man. A lot of people think that man was made for the Sabbath. <laughs> okay. A lot of people have that mentality. Okay. Sabbath was made, says so right there. Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Question. Had the Lord died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures yet? When he said that, no, he wasn't. No, he had. He was speaking unto the Hebraic. Jews, the Jews, to whom he was offering the kingdom of heaven. Okay? You have to rightly divide the word of truth, my friend. You'll become like a sweetheart up there, okay? Blending everything together and a liar, okay? <coughs> or like one of these non denominational half wit twits, okay? Romans 2. Romans 2. Romans 2. And what, hey, what's a Jew? <clears throat> what's a Jew? Okay? It's a two part seri uh, video series, will be in the description box. Okay? Well, uh, Romans 2. And this is why Rome and all her daughters are replacement theology. Okay, or excuse me, Romans 3. Romans 3. Verse, uh, verse 1. What advantage then hath the Jew? Or what is the profit? Uh, or what advantage then hath the Jew? Or what profit is there of circumcision? Much every way. 
Verse 2. Chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. And see, these crazy, wicked, black Hebrew Israelites like to say, well, we're the truth. It's impossible for a Hamite or a Japhethite to be a Hebrew. It's impossible. It's impossible for some Shemites, such as the Japanese, the Chinese, the Korean, those from Thailand and stuff like that, the Mongolians and whatnot, okay? It's impossible for some Shemites to be a Hebrew, okay? The Hebraic people came from Shem, okay? Hebrew came out of Shem. Hence, the Hebrews are Shemitic, all right? They were taken out of Shem. You can do the research yourself. The what is a Jew, it will be for you in the description box where we already do that, okay? So the replacement theology individual, such as the black Hebrew Israelite, okay? You're, you're not a Hebrew. Okay, scripturally, a Jew is equated with what? Okay, what advantage then had the Jew? Circumcision, which was of the law. Okay, much every way, chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God, like the law and the commandments and stuff like that. Okay, unto the Hebraic people that were taken out of Shem. Abram came from Shem. Hence, the Hebraic people are Shemitic. Okay? All right? Okay? Get it? That that's that's very simple. That's that's very 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 simple. All right? But now Romans 13. Romans 13 verses 8 on verse 14. To the close. Owe no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Now, Heretics out there uh, like to like the you know antinomianist pond scum like to come to well Romans 9 10 and 11 are uh, uh, Paul writing for the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. No, it's not. No, it's not. No. The Pauline epistles are all document for us today to the Jew first and also to the Gentile, okay? That is a dangerous, wicked, heretical thing that these antinomianist pond scum devils like to do. Don't believe them. If you want to, hey, God loves you, you know, roll up another one. But they're lying to you, okay? All right? They're doing that to protect their satanic just believe and receive doctrine. Okay? But, all right, for this thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. You got anything that's not the authorized version? Is that in there? Thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. And that knowing the time, it is now that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than we when we believe. Yeah, today we're one day closer to the redemption of the purchased possession. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. You're recollecting in Genesis 1 verses 1 on to verse 5. Uh-huh. Okay. And let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day. Not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lusts thereof. Now, in Romans chapter 1, you see this glance. And in the book of Acts, people, Paul. Paul was the apostle unto the Gentiles. Yes, he was. But, as you read in the book of Acts, what was his manner? He went to the Jew first, then to the Gentile. Okay, Romans chapter 1, verse 16. For, uh, 15 and 16. 
So as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. Greek is a Gentile. Okay? You see that personified in what Paul did. Going to the Jew first and then to the Greek or the Gentile. Okay? Greek is a Gentile. Okay? And see, Catholicism make all this to do that Peter was in, uh, was in Rome and whatnot. And scripturally, you have no evidence to support that, that Peter was in Rome. Paul was in Rome, but Peter was in Rome. See, Rome has to put Peter in Rome in order for them to work off of their heretical satanic doctrines that, you know, Peter, the Pope, the succession, you know, blah, 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 okay? Be aware. Be aware of that. Beware of that. But also be aware, okay? All right? All right? So, in Romans chapter 13, verse 9, you don't see anything about the keeping the dietary thing or keeping the Sabbath. And you cute. You might bring this up. Well, it doesn't say anything about uh, worshiping idols either, Brad. Dude, have you read First and Second Corinthians before? Where Paul talks about idolatry and denouncing it? Have you have you read First and Second Corinthians before? Why don't you do that? You go read First and Second Corinthians, okay? All right, all right. Go go ahead. Read First and Second Corinthians, okay? Paul talks quite a bit about idolatry. In First and Second Corinthians, okay, all right, <laughs> all right. It, it, that's likened onto, uh, well, you know, born being born again is for the Jews. You are so stupid. I'm sorry. I, I'm not being kind about that. Okay. Well, being born again is just for the Jews. Paul never talked about it. You're right. He didn't. He defined it. Okay. This. That, you know, that's the level that these people will go to justify themselves. Okay? That's that kind of, well, it doesn't say, it's like in the book of John, repentance is never mentioned. So, so what? <laughs> what about the rest of Scripture, huh? Also, God, Jesus never said, I'm God. He didn't have to. He said, I am. It's, it's the same principle. Okay? All right? All right? Uh, idolatry is not okay. Okay? Idolatry is tremendously dealt with within the Pauline epistles. And, of course, you read Acts 15 about the keeping the law today and stuff like that. Okay? All right? All right? Now... Romans 14, 5 on verse 7. Romans 14, 5 on verse 7. One man esteemeth one day above another. Another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. He that regardeth the day regardeth it unto the Lord. God took a day off. The Sabbath was for the Jews, the Hebraic Jews, for a sign. In that day you were to concentrate on the Lord, not doing your own will kind of stuff, but focusing on the Lord under the law. Today, one man esteemeth one day above another. Another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. He that regardeth the day, regardeth it unto the Lord. And he that regardeth not the day, to the Lord he doth not regard it. He that eateth, eateth to the Lord, for he giveth God thanks. And he that eateth not, to the Lord he eateth not, and giveth God thanks. For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. 
It's talking about a day of worship. A day where you, you know, God took a day off. Okay? The Sabbath is not a salvific requirement. But God does want us to take a day off and pay attention to Him. We do that every day. Amen, 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 amen. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But, you know, our day's off. Your day's off. Are you giving it to the Lord or are you just sitting on your couch eating Cheetos with chopsticks? <laughs> Am I the only one who does that? <laughs> and watching television, huh? Why aren't you keeping the Sabbath? Shut up! Why are you watching television? Why are you doing your own will on the Sabbath? Okay? About the Sabbath, about a day of rest where you give your attention to the Lord. Colossians 2, okay, all right, and see, and this is something that you, um, lovely friends to Catholics, December 25th worshipers, don't like to acknowledge, but you like to twist it to justify yourself with yoking yourself up with Rome and justifying it. Not one of you uh, December 25th worshipers have answered why don't you get all up in arms and divide the body of Christ apparently over your stuff why don't you do that for Astarte you know where the resurrection how come you don't do that for Astarte well if you did that would give you something you give you away wouldn't it yeah it sure would yeah anyway anyway Colossians 2 13 on verse 17. And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh hath he quickened, made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances, referencing the law, that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a shoe of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Now, let no man therefore judge you in me, you know, being kosher, or in drink, or in respect of an holy day, not holiday, holy day, or of the new moon, or of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. Holy day. Holy day. Is a reference. Unto the holy days. That are in scripture. Dear friend. And for you. To cause all the stink. Protecting Rome. About December 25th. And have the audacity to come here, which they do, which are a shadow of things to come. That December 25th is a shadow of things to come. The Lord rebuke you. It's a wicked, vile tradition of man created by Babylon, crafted in Egypt perfected in Rome. It is a pagan Roman Catholic uh, holiday. Okay? And holy day, new moon, Sabbath. Okay? I can't see that. Okay? Ordinances. All references to things under the law which was to the Jews. But what do you what do you guys do? What do you guys do? And and see this? If if some of you guys would do this, I would shut up. I, I would. But see, you're too proud. You're too you're too up on your high horse. To and you justify Rome. <laughs> justify Rome. But here's what, if, if one of these guys 
would just once publicly say, yes, I know it is a thing made of man. I know that. 1 Corinthians 6, 12, and 13. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. If one of these guys would once say that publicly and admit to the fact that, yes, it is a pagan Roman Catholic holiday, but I'm going to do it anyway because I want to, all things are lawful unto me, I would, I would never mention it again. I wouldn't. I see, I would have respect for a man if they could at least admit that. I'd leave it alone. I would. I would, but see, you're too proud. It's a tradition, man. Right? Meats for the belly, and the belly for meats. Remember this. But God shall destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord. The Lord for the body. Verses 19 and 20. What? Now, this is talking about actual physical fornication. The context, yes it is. But for a saint... What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, that ye are not your own? If you're saved, God the Father dwells within you. Okay? You're not saved, that doesn't apply to you. Very simple. For ye are bought with a price, the death, burial, and resurrection, the precious blood of Jesus Christ. You never sin. That, that's why the sinful flesh was sanctified because he kept the law perfectly and never sinned. Okay? That's why. Okay? It's very simple. Okay? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Meats for the belly. And the belly for meats. But God shall destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord. And the Lord for the body. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, we see heaven came first, then earth. Then if you wanted to say, well, I believe the sun was there in verse 4 and 5. Eh. But, okay. Even with, what came first? What came first? Ken Helvin, who is a Jesuit, Jesuitism is refined Baal worship, okay? Baal, you know, sun worship, okay? It makes sense that Ken Helvin taught that the sun is the center of the universe and that the earth goes around the sun. He's a, he's a Jesuit, Baalite, sun worshiper, okay? I don't know about you, but uh, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Um, did. <laughs> There's no evidence at all to suggest that the sun and the moon were there before the heaven or the earth does it. It's, sh show it to me! <laughs> okay, dude. The evidence is contrary that the sun, the moon, the stars came well after the creation of the earth. What am I getting at? I believe, and like I said, I'm not being dogmatic, but this is what I believe about what we just looked at. I believe, and I remember Mr. Kent Helvin, Mr. Jesuit that he is, uh, he believes that the sun is the center and everything evolves around the sun. Uh, what we just looked at tells me that the sun and the stars and the moon were created for what? The earth. And as I said in the one comment, translation, I believe the sun goes around the earth, not vice versa. Because according to what we just read, and I believe this, okay, I believe every word of this, 
This is my this is my standard for truth. This is where where I go to find truth, the authorized version of scripture. Okay? According to this, I see that heaven and earth, and then we see uh, and God made two great lights. The greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. I see earth made first, then the sun, the moon, the stars. We saw reference to planets. I believe that the earth is the center and everything is around the earth. That is what I believe. I believe the sun, the moon, the stars were made for the earth. And that the earth is the center and that the sun goes around that. Okay? That's what I believe. I'm not being dogmatic about that. There are bigger fish to fry. Okay? But, like I said, uh, this was a... And to you who asked this, who sparked this, thank you. Thank you. I did, fascinating. Okay? Fascinating. All right? So that, that, that's going to be it for this little video. Thank you for very much for watching this if you do. I hope this sparks something in you. that would be like, huh, okay, well, all right, you know, whatever. You know, um, and like I said, the individual who asked that question wasn't being confrontational or combative. Did give the little, little uh, thing about the, you know, it's like the narrative so you don't believe what you were asking me. And I don't believe it either. About the, the earth on the axis thing, or I don't know, and I don't care, okay? But that thing about, uh, you know, does the sun go around the earth or the earth around the sun? I think the sun goes around the earth, according to what we just read, okay? And, he said, and remember, Joshua said, uh, sun stands still? That was a reference that I didn't even think about until just now, where Joshua... Uh, commanded the sun in the sight of Israel. It's like, stand still to the sun. Okay? Let's find that. Let's find that really quick. What is we? We got 132. Let's, let's find that. That's in the book of Joshua. Obviously. Let's find that. Find that. Okay? Hold on. We ain't done yet. Just want to, uh, uh, Joshua. Got to pause this. Wait, no, wait, 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 wait. No, no, no. Okay, yeah, I got to pause it. Hold on. Joshua 10. Joshua 10. Verses 12 on to verse 14. Then spake Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, Son Stand thou still upon Gibeon, and thou moon in the valley of Ajalon. And the sun stood still, and the moon stayed. Until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is this, is not this written in the book of Jashir? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven. And hasted not to go down about a whole day. And there was no day like that before it or after it, that the Lord hearkened unto the voice of a man, for the Lord fought for Israel. There's pretty good evidence too there. It really is. The sun and the moon stood still. So wait, why doesn't it say the earth stood still if the sun is the center of everything? Again, I think, thank you. I think that's a good evidence again to show you that, I, as I believe, as I believe, I'm not being dogmatic, but the sun and the moon stood still. Because I believe the earth is the center of everything, and the sun and the moon are going around the earth. Sun and moon, stand still. So, right there, okay? So, that's going to be it. Thank you so much for watching if you do. Uh, brethren, I'm going to put this in the community section as well. Um, please keep your servant in prayer. Um, uh, we, we, we need help. Also, too, I'm going to need a new health phone. Um, so please...
keep that in prayer that the Lord might provide means or whatever for a new health phone. That's kind of a necessity for, for this, you know, talking to people, okay? That, that is kind of a necessity to hear people, to talk to them. But anyway, that's going to be it. Thank you for watching. If you do, I love you, and we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.